Greetings, I'm Professor Hobo, and welcome to another Hobo Technos product review. I go through a lot of AA batteries in my household, and most of them are being used in below freezing conditions where standard alkalines simply don't cut it. So I end up splurging on these expensive lithium one-time use batteries that have a much better discharge rate in cold conditions. And I wondered to myself, is there a good rechargeable solution for AA lithiums on the market yet? Now I've seen the ones where you have to plug in a little USB cable to each individual battery and that's not what I wanted. I wanted something I could put into a regular battery charger and didn't need eight USB ports to charge an eight pack of batteries. So after some digging, I found these EBL brand lithium batteries that were rechargeable and had some decent reviews. So I wondered, of course, are they any good? Let's find out. It just so happens that these EBL lithium batteries are the same brand of NIMH batteries or nickel metal hydride rechargeables that I typically buy for basic use around the house. And I happen to need another eight pack of these. It's not that they wear out, it's that they end up disappearing. And so since I needed some of those nickel metal hydride rechargeables, I went ahead and also grabbed an eight pack of these EBL lithium rechargeables. I also bought two sets of AA powered lights along with a couple of new time-lapse clocks for the lab that were also AA powered. So before we get started, I do need to mention that this video is not sponsored in any way, shape or form. I was not contacted by any of these brands, nor was I paid anything to make this video. I did buy these batteries, these lights, chargers, and the testing equipment, all with my own money. I made this video simply because I was curious if AA lithium batteries are really any good. So let's go ahead and check out these batteries. First thing to note, the EBL lithiums are rated differently than any other rechargeable AA I've ever seen before. You can see right here on the side, it actually says 3000 milliwatt hours. Other rechargeables on the market are rated in milliamp hours. I found this odd. Why would they rate them using a different metric? Now let's check out the EBL nickel metal hydrides. All standard rechargeable AA batteries up to this date have a cell voltage of 1.2 volts nominal, whereas the lithium version, if you look at the packaging and on the battery, it says it's rated at 1.5 volts. So let's do a little math to figure out which one of these two batteries has a higher capacity. So as we know, power is measured in watts. To figure out the total power in watts, we can use the formula watts equals volts times amps. So we can take 1.2 volts times 2800 milliamp hours and get 3360 milliwatt hours. Since the lithium version is only rated at 3000 milliwatt hours, we can see that from the start, the white nickel metal hydride version has a 360 milliwatt hour or 12% capacity advantage over the red EBL lithium batteries. However, since the lithium battery runs at a higher cell voltage and it's supposed to be better in the cold, we'll have to test these things under multiple conditions to see do they provide any kind of advantage. After all, these are quite expensive. Now, what about the lamps I'm going to test with? I was looking for something high output so the batteries wouldn't last more than a day or two, and I wanted something that was cheap. It was quite a research effort to find everything in these conditions. So these fancy looking ones here, it looks like they might be from the 1960s, are River Lux brand LED lamps. They're powered by three AA batteries you stick there in the bottom, and they're $12.99 each on Amazon. Now what's cool is that these are touch lamps, so you just have to barely touch this button at the bottom. You can see it works even with gloves on for the light to come on, and it has two settings, low, high, and then you can turn it off. Of course, on this test, we're going to use the brightest setting. Now these camping lanterns are gear light brand, and I chose these in particular because they have both a magnetic base, so it allows them to stick onto a metal surface just like that. And it also has a built-in hanging hook, so you can hang these upside down and inside of a tent or on a wire or something like that as well. 
as a nice little handle. Since we're gonna go ahead and actually use these camping, I decided to splurge, and I didn't get the cheapest thing I could find. They're $17.58 a pair as of the filming of this video. And they actually come with Duracell alkalines in the packaging. So that's what I used in a test. They were brand new Duracells. And I decided to use the Duracells as a control against the two rechargeable batteries. Now this lantern doesn't have any switches on it. It just has on or off and you just turn it on or turn it off by picking up or lowering the light. Now you can adjust the amount of light that comes out, but it does not make the LEDs turn off or on or anywhere in between. It's either on or off. So I kind of figured these were going to be a pretty good power hog because you've got three strips of LEDs in there fired at maximum brightness at all times. And by the way, if you're interested in anything you see in this video from the rechargeable batteries to the chargers to the lamps, links are going to be in the description of this video in case you're interested in trying any of these things out yourself. Now let's talk about price. The Duracell Copper Top, just their standard battery, one-time use, are usually priced around a buck a piece, and that's about what they go for on Amazon. Now the EBL Nickel Metal Hydrides, you're gonna see these are gonna be the white rechargeable batteries that we're gonna be doing in this video. So the Nickel Metal Hydrides are the old school nickel rechargeable batteries are white. And in this video, the lithium rechargeables are red. So that's how you'll be able to tell the difference when you're seeing them on the upcoming time lapse. These EBL Nickel Metal Hydrides were $1.87 a piece when I bought them in March of 2023 from Amazon. You can see here from this page, they are rated at 1200 charge cycles. That makes them a 16th of a cent per use or about six cycles per penny, not including the cost of electricity to recharge them. Now let's move on to the EBL lithium batteries. Now you're gonna come in with a little price shock here. You can see they're a whopping $4.75 each on Amazon. They claim to last longer than any other batteries at the same capacity and they are stronger and perform better than the 1.2 volt nickel metal hydride batteries, which is of course they sell. This is their brand makes both of these batteries. So they're basically saying, our lithiums are better than our own nickel metal hydrides. Now these two are also rated at 1200 recharge cycles and do require a special charger, which I did purchase in a bundle to save a couple of bucks on the charger. These cost four tenths of a cent per charge or two and a half cycles per penny. This makes the lithiums about two and a half times more expensive than its nickel metal hydride counterpart. Now, as for my testing criteria first, I need to let you know that I did fully charge, discharge and fully recharge again, all of the rechargeable batteries before I started any of my testing. And I did so at an ambient 62 degrees Fahrenheit here at the lab. The batteries were given an equal rest period to cool to room temperature before being placed in the lamps. And as for the low temperature deep freezer test, they were left inside the lamps at deep freezer temperatures between zero degrees Fahrenheit and minus 10 degrees Fahrenheit for one hour before testing. Note that I did attempt to find the largest capacity lithium and nickel metal hydride batteries on the market from the same brand. And at the time of this testing, these were what was available in March of 23. Now for the room temperature test you're about to see, I use both the lantern and the lamp. Now I call this the lantern because it's obviously a lantern. And this is a lamp because, well, it looks like a lamp and it is a lamp. Now I used both of these during the first test, which you're about to see, because I wasn't sure which one was going to run out first and which one used more power. I did expect the test to take between one and two days, and I really didn't want to have to repeat it twice. Okay, let's go ahead and watch the first time lapse together. Now this time lapse was done at the room temperature. You can see the clock spinning next to it, and as each light goes out, the elapsed time I'll put up on the screen. You can see right away odd behavior in the lithium lantern within the first hour. It starts turning off and on at random intervals. And now notice the nickel metal hydride lantern fading fast around the four hour mark. The lithium lantern continues to blink less and less and the nickel metal hydride lantern after eight hours is so dim you can see the individual LEDs on camera. Right around the 12 hour mark, the lithium lamp now starts to blink off and on. At the 16 hour mark, it totally goes out. 
The lithium lantern continues to blink about once an hour, so we'll consider that dead. And we'll see around the 27 hour mark, the nickel metal hydride lamp is finally giving up the ghost. By hour 30 to 31, it's completely out. The alkaline continues to go past the 36 hour mark before the lantern starts to fade out, but continues to go past 48 hours. The lamp, however, peters out around 60 hours. Now the results of this test were pretty shocking, at least to me. The lithium battery actually fared the worst. The lantern going out in a few hours while the lamp barely made it 12 hours. The nickel metal hydride came in second place as its lantern dims out around eight hours and the lamp finally died around 30 hours. The alkaline was of course a beast and was barely phased at all until the 36 hour mark and was still going on to about 60 hours when it finally went out. Now if you go by the numbers, the lithium only lasts about a third as long as the nickel metal hydride, which only lasts about half as long as the standard Duracell. So let's do a little math here. The Duracell costs about a dollar, lasts 60 hours per charge which of course, it's, since it's a throwaway battery, it only gets one charge cycle. That works out to roughly 1.7 hours of runtime per cent for our lamp. Keep that in mind, 1.7 hours per penny. The lithium costs $4.25 each, lasts 12 hours per charge, but has 1,200 cycles. That means one battery will last 14,400 hours in our lamp before it needs replaced. This works out to about 34 hours of runtime per penny. The nickel metal hydride costs $1.87, lasts 30 hours per charge in our lamp with 1,200 cycles. That means one battery will last a whopping 36,000 hours in our lamp before needing to be replaced. This equals a massive 192 hours of runtime per penny. That's a lot of runtime for a single cent. So if you go by those numbers, things look completely different. The nickel metal hydride rechargeable is the clear winner in cost per cycle and is the least wasteful to replace. I also had no issues running our lantern, unlike the lithium battery doesn't seem to like these lanterns very much. Next, we do the deep freezer test. Now, in this test, I just used these lanterns as they seem to run out faster. Now, I wasn't expecting the lanterns to dim so quickly in the freezer, so the clock face disappears pretty quickly. But I can still figure out the elapsed time by just counting how many seconds per hour goes by in the time lapse. Again, just like clockwork, the lithium starts flickering within the first hour in the freezer. I did swap lanterns, so there wasn't an issue with the lantern itself it's pretty clear these lithium batteries have some kind of shortcoming. Surprisingly, within six hours, the alkaline battery gets very dim and the nickel metal hydride also dims, but not by as much. By 12 hours, the alkaline is blinking on and off and the nickel metal hydride is still dim, but stable. By 14 hours, the Duracell gives it up and goes brown dwarf for the rest of the show. The lithium continues to randomly flash, but is clearly dead. By 19 hours, the nickel metal hydride two is dim enough to see the individual LED, so we're gonna call that Gonzo. Now the clear winner for longevity in the sub-zero test, surprisingly, ends up being the nickel metal hydride. So not only is it the best bang for the buck, but it's the best cold weather battery compared to a single use lithium battery or even an alkaline. So what did we learn from these tests? In standard room temperature conditions, the clear winner for sheer runtime is going to be the old fashioned Duracell alkaline battery. However, being a one time use, one trick pony and ending up filling up landfills, it doesn't really make them the most practical or the most cost effective. In fact, they end up being the most expensive solution per hour across the board for all three of our batteries. The winner here clearly goes to the EBL nickel metal hydride. It only lasts half as long as an alkaline battery, but you can charge it up to six times per penny, up to 1200 cycles, making it the obvious choice as long as your application can handle the lower 1.2 volt that you get in a rechargeable AA battery. It also seems to be the best choice in below freezing conditions short of using one of these 
one-time use throwaway lithium batteries. However, we can't count the lithium battery out. There are some electronics on the market that demand one and a half volt AA batteries like certain cameras and other high-end electronics that can't use standard 1.2 volt rechargeables. Now in that case, and only that case, should you consider getting EBL lithium batteries. It does last only one fifth as long as an alkaline battery and costs a whopping $4.25 each. But if you do the math and figure out in the long run, it still buys you 34 hours of runtime per penny versus the 1.7 hours you get from a name brand alkaline. And surprisingly for cold weather use, the alkaline fared the worst of all three batteries. I'm still surprised the rechargeable lithium didn't do better in the cold. That's what they're supposed to do. The single use lithium batteries that I get here, these energizers, are superior in cold weather conditions. If you have a thermometer or something you're gonna put in a freezer, you gotta use these. I have multiple weather stations on my property that are out in below zero conditions sometimes. You have to use these batteries. You try to put alkalines in there, they conk out. That's what these are supposed to do. Lithium is supposed to be better in the cold. So why these EBL lithiums suck so bad in the cold I just have no idea. Now I did consider using one of these Energizer lithiums as a control in the freezer experiment, but they last so darn long that it probably would have taken multiple days, two or three days even possibly, for the lamp to finally go out. And I just didn't really have that time for this video. It's already long enough. Now I know this video is out of the ordinary for what I typically do, but I'm trying to mix things up and provide a little more education to my audience. So if you did like this video, even though it's a little bit different, let me know in the comments below. And if you want me to actually test different brands of single-use lithium batteries to see which one maybe lasts the longest or has the most power, be sure to leave a comment and give me some ideas. Thanks for watching. If you learned something today, don't forget to give me that thumbs up below. And if you're not a subscriber already, you know what to do. That's it for now. Till next time. Odin commands you to like and subscribe and clean my litter box. RV Golf Guy, Von Rob, Brian Lubbers, John Stacey Soroka, Dr. Steve Eisenberg.